so I have here a number of pencils and I have some watercolor pencils and also some regular pencils in terms of watercolor pencils I have a nice selection here of museum aquarelle and these are by Karen Dash and then I also have a few Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils which are in this nice color palette uh, to go with these ones and then um, I also have my beloved luminance pencils. I have more than this. They're just generally uh, in some trays right now. And also I've got some whole binds too. So I'll see which pencils I will use. And also I have my other pencils. So these ones here, which are Durbant light fast pencils. So I might use some of them as well. Okay. To begin with, I think I want to add some definition to this one and I'm going to use some watercolor pencils. So here we have burnt ochre and the way I'm going to do that is basically need a sharp point and then I'm just going to create, I don't know why it's so noisy today outside. So I'm just going to emphasize in between, just creating some depth, not pulling it up too far in because I've got the shimmery watercolor there that I don't want to lose and just kind of adding a bit of dimension, maybe some shadowing and texture like so. And then I'm going to take not too wet brush that's important and then just softening those lines and that will just wake up the pigments and make them come through a bit more and you can see instead of being flat it now has a bit of dimension so that was quite useful so i'll do a little swatch here just to remind myself what this color was So like that. I think it was this one here that I used all over and a bit of this as well at the end. This part is not necessary but sometimes I like to work with color palettes and then we're gonna do the watercolor here as well and now let's move on to a pencil for this one and I'm thinking I don't have any blues in my museum aquarels not a single blue one these are turquoise so what I can do is click into these ones so I have got dark sub green now let's see I'm just gonna do it on one corner here that actually works quite well just going to do it on the very very tip of it and then with a sharp point I'm going to also define the lines and that hopefully will create a more rounder look so it's not flat and to do that generally just go in with a harder line and then just soften that line with a much softer touch and that creates a lovely lovely effect so see the difference here and i will do that on all of them so i'll show you again so you first go in i usually go up and down small small movements up and down up and down I struggle to do a straight line so with little movements like that I feel that I can go and create a straight line and then softening that line with a very very smooth round movement I don't know what's wrong with my tip they keep breaking this is the second time now honestly hasn't happened to me before with any of the luminance pencils so I'm not sure what's going on here. I didn't drop it or anything like that. Okay, and then we're going to also 
create that sort of rounder look softer look down here so we're going to the key is is barely any pressure over here I need to intensify so I'm just gonna do that and then softening so you can see now this area is done and this one isn't and with a bit of pencil you can create that look okay I'm going to go ahead and do all of them so this is what it looks like now and I will swatch this pencil here as well So if I show you on this side, so here is what the line looks like, like this. And then just softening it like that. So I'll show you again. And then softening it. And you can see how far you need to pull it out to have like a really gradual blend into nothing but basically that's what you are looking to achieve and then these greens here I'll start with the I don't think I need this gray I think I'll go with the darker side of them earth green yellowish again the key here always is a fine point so you can get into those small areas now with watercolor pencils specifically if I have colors that are very close to it what I can do is without the blending I can just layer those colors so the next one so we've got May green. So I first was earth green yellowish, which I will swatch here. Then we have May green. Like so. And then we have cadmium yellow lemon, which is the lightest one. And you probably won't see it on top of this color because it's pretty much, look, it's just very light. It's just more of a yellowish version of the chartreuse. And I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side here. So just melting the pencils that we just layered on top. Now I'm going to create these swatches with a bit of water and also add the two greens that I use from my watercolor palette. Okay, so this is my chartreuse palette right here. And then here, there was a bit of everything, wasn't there? So maybe I'll just create the swatches up here. So what did we have? We had this color here. And then on top I added a bit of this color. No, wrong. I added this color here. And then next one was the color next to it. And then we added a little bit of this color. And then finally, it was this one right here. And some sort of a pink. I also had a pink on top of this one. Was it this color? Can't quite remember now, but let's go with that. Okay. So pencil wise, let's see. I think I'm just gonna darken them actually. I'm gonna go with a nice color. Oh, this is a good one. So I've got crimson here. And because I'm not expecting to go over this color, I don't mind to go with my whole bands because generally 
I can't layer on my Holbeins once I really add the color onto them. That's it. They're quite waxy and so I can't layer. And here I'm just going to blend it out a little bit so it's not as drastic. And then on the end I'm just going to layer this color and really push into it to make it quite saturated. And then I'm going to do the same here, just all the way down. about here and then I'll start blending it out and then really pushing hard at the end at the bottom rather okay so soft touch over here a bit more coming down bit softer towards the top like that and then see if I have even darker what's this wine red I mean I'm not expecting much of a change but just a little bit of pink at the bottom okay so I'm going to create a swatch here like that so, these are our colorful mushrooms. I do feel a bit annoyed about these, honestly. I've done so much work here, so I might just skip that part altogether. I have these three pencils, which will be a similar kind of combo to those. Okay, so firstly, I want to just swatch out these pencils here, just to see how different they are, first of all. And then we'll see what happens. It could be maybe also paper, it could be maybe a specific watercolor. I'm so sorry about all the noise, it's like ridiculous today. Hopefully, you don't hear it as much. Oftentimes, when we film, we kind of are so aware of the noise. And then once we're editing, we realized actually it wasn't that bad <laughs> in the microphone. Anyway, the colors are here. They seem to be more saturated, so let's see how they will layer. So we'll go over and do the same thing as before. First of all, with the darker color. I mean, I didn't have any problems here with the Museum Aquarelle, so let's see if it's the pencil or something else and then so the first one was light olive 40 percent second one is olive yellow i'm just gonna layer it over the top slightly and then dragging it slightly down like so and then we have my beautiful chartreuse here spring green and that's gonna go as the final color like that okay so, let's see, does it do the same thing? It actually does. So, in that case, it could be maybe the watercolor, but then I've got two different watercolors here. Hmm. I don't know, actually. What is it? I'm trying to rescue the situation just by blending it as much as I can. So, in my honest opinion, this is not a pretty look. There's just so much texture here that I didn't anticipate and it kind of didn't lay and dry um, smoothly so what I will do as my final attempt is use normal pencils and I think I'll be able to rectify it so what I'm going to do is just blend the darker color which is moss green go over this with olive yellow this nice color here creates a nice blend as well just pulling it slightly down because i want to 
cover up this sort of entire area here so and then I'm going to use the chartreuse which is a spring green and bring that spring green which is a little bit too green maybe but I'm just going to blend it into the watercolor like that and I think now it looks much better what do you think let me know I think it looks good so we've got I'll just swatch these colors out here so these two the top colors are the same spring green and olive yellow so <laughs> here we go all right I'll do the same on here and we'll meet again <laughs> it's a much longer video than I anticipated so hang on there so here in the second one I actually didn't use the green color because I feel like it's a little bit too green here so I wanted to just stay within that beautiful yellow here and just use these two the olive yellow and the moss green okay so next one so I went through my pencil collection quickly and matched a few colors so I'm going to try and blend through these colors here so we've got russet and that's going to go just on top like that just as a hard line first and then softening the line I mean these alone to get them perfectly blended would probably take me about 30-40 minutes which I'm not going to do today I just want to show you a quick way of adding a little bit of dimension here I have matched the color purplish red so just on top and a little bit onto the sides and for the little round one I've got anthraconoid pink and that actually is a very close match so it's not creating a great deal of a contrast I wish I had something a little bit more coral to go with it but I don't think it will work got some orange which is really not it but maybe it'll create a bit more depth and contrast like so so this orange is carnelian I'm going to go into small brush now round one and just softening the line without moving it too much so like that So you can see a little bit of contrast immediately and we're going to do the same up here and then clean brush and just no water and wipe the edges like that same thing here I guess I can always take like a pink pencil and do it with a pink pencil, colored pencil rather than watercolor pencil because I don't like this orange in here. Okay, for the leg, I'm going to go with Carmine Lake. And you remember those legs were really, really saturated and dark and I quite like that contrast. So we're going to create that over here. And then as we come about this, like two centimeters to the top, I'm just going to blend it now. So use a 
lighter touch and then even lighter going up a bit more so sometimes with the crumbs you can't see anything so you need a brush never swipe it with a finger because that will smudge immediately and then just correct whatever needs to be filled in like if there's any white gaps like so just go in and correct it okay so that's looking good to me and I'm going to repeat it with the other three so now I want to show you how to differentiate what's in the foreground what's in the background so I'm going to use a pencil I've got a buff titanium so it's not there white it's a slightly more off-white I don't know how much you can see here we go so the more off-white so this one I remember was in the foreground right so then whatever is in the background I'm going to add a little line like so and then just blend it a little line here and blend it just pulling it out slightly and then this one is behind that one so I'm going to do the same here like so it's very minor very light but it brings a little bit of that kind of layering and shadowing so it's very very light I wonder if it's showing up at all <laughs> On the camera so that's that and then of course these need a lot of help a lot of work so I'm gonna go through my pink pencils and traconoid pink I think that might be a good one just to cover up this orange a bit more or otherwise we just have to go for something quite a bit darker like here a bit more of a plummy color so I have two options I have alizarin crimson or purplish red I think alizarin crimson let's try that so here I'll need to do quite a bit of blending so I think this is now better I can't see that orange color too much Um, of course you could work on more shadowing so I'll show you the little one so for instance here on the neck of this kind of like a berry shaped fungus so I need to now turn my sketchbook otherwise I'm gonna go outside of lines quite heavily so I'll have to correct now that. So here we go. And now blending that out as well. The blending is what takes a very long time to perfect. So we've got more definition now. And I would then go into creating those dots, remember? Those little kind of dots on the um, fungi. So the marks that we have here from the watercolour, I would just use that to emphasise. Let's see. And then just around it, create these circular kind of shapes so 
Now I'll leave it at that. So you get the idea. I won't be able to finish these two because the lighting is now very much on the cool side. So <laughs> it um, doesn't usually look great when filming. So I'll have to stop here. But you can repeat the same with the other pencils. Just taking the color slightly more down towards here. Uh, actually all the way down to the berry and then just like I did here blending it out to create a more rounder effect rather than a flat one and we're still maintaining the watercolor effects as well and in those areas just put a little dot and then use a bit of a pencil to go around it in circular motions and you can change up the colors depending on what you like so that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.